the Commander-in-Chief in an Oval Office meeting referring to people from African countries and Haitians with the most vile and vulgar language. The language festers. When ignorance and bigotry is allied with power, it is a dangerous force in our country. Your silence and your amnesia is complicit. Right now in our nation, we have a problem. I don't know if 73% of your time is spent on white supremacist hate groups. I don't know if 73% of your time is spent concerned about the people in fear in communities in this country. Sikh Americans, Muslim Americans, Black Americans. The fact pattern is clear of the threats in this country. I hurt. When Dick Durbin called me, I had tears of rage when I heard about this experience in that meeting. And for you not to feel that pain, hurt, and that pain, and to dismiss some of the questions of my colleagues, saying I've already answered that line of questions when tens of millions of Americans are hurting right now because of what they're worried about what happened in the White House. That's unacceptable to me. There are threats in this country. People plotting. I receive enough death threats to know the reality. Kamala receives enough death threats to know the reality. Maisie receives enough death threats to know the reality. And I've got a president of the United States whose office I respect who talks about the country's origins of my fellow citizens in the most despicable of manner. You don't remember. You can't remember the words of your uh, commander-in-chief. I find that unacceptable. Mr. Chairman, I'm grateful to be on this committee. I'm more than ever today happy I am here. Thank you. Now that I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts, every ball you throw will make me rich. There stands me wife, the idol of me life, singing rowly bowl a ball a penny a pitch. All together now. Harmony. Roll a ball, a ball, sing and roll a ball, a penny a piece.